Hi, welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. Welcome back or welcome to Elderflower Stitches. My name is Susie and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about knitting and sewing and my other crafty hobbies, all of the lovely things in my shop and occasionally a little bit of home life and mum life too. So a little bit about me if we haven't met before. Um, hi, welcome, I'm so glad you found me. Um, my name's Susie and I live in a leafy little corner of East Sussex in England with my husband Joe and our two-year-old son Gus and our eight-year-old very sassy, very fluffy ragdoll Persian cross called Beatrice. Um, you will probably see a little bit of each of those um, loved ones in some vlog footage at the end of this podcast. Um, I work part-time as a primary school teacher and when I'm not at work I'm being a mummy and running my little business. And in between those times when I can carve out five minutes for myself I like to do a little bit of knitting and sewing. And today I'm going to show you some of the projects that I have been working on. At the moment it is um, August, it's I think the 19th of August, um, it's coming up for our 10th wedding anniversary, so we got married on the 23rd of August in 2013, we were just 20 to like move around because the um, light is a little bit crazy in here at the moment. I'm sitting in my sewing room which is at the back of our house and our house, um, our garden is like east facing so I get the sunrise in my sewing room which is gorgeous but not ideal for filming in but in the afternoon the sun is around the front of the house and it's a bit too dark in here to film so I've gone with a little bit too bright and I hope that that's okay. <laughs> I think it's better than it being too dark. So it's August, it is August the, it's August the 20th, so I'm currently on summer holidays at the moment and we have um, two more weeks of the summer holidays here in the UK and that means I can really focus on all of my yarn shop things. So this year I've been doing two different advent calendars. I brought back my 2021 yarn advent and I have a new advent for this year. And I decided that rather than try and do them for months on end and it be this really hard ongoing task, I would just carve out some time in the summer holidays when I would really focus on getting the yarn advents dyed up and twisted and labelled and wrapped and it's a huge job so I personally like to label each advent mini with the number and the colourway and I know that some yarn dyes and this is no slight to anyone else but some yarn dyes just have the mini twisted and then it's packaged but I like to have the number and the colourway on there so that I can keep them in order once I've unwrapped them and then also I know what the colourway is so if you fall in love with an advent colourway you can ask me for a full skein of it or a sweater quantity of it and that kind of thing so um, I like to label them up but that is quite an onerous task and then of course they all need wrapping and I wrap them individually in a little paper bag and put the number on so it's a big job and I've been working really hard on that all summer which has mean, meant that my shop has kind of been closed um, I've left my Etsy shop open which has got some ready to ship yarn which is all like behind me on the shelves um, and progress keepers and any digital patterns like my sewing and my project bag patterns are all available all the time but I haven't had um, I haven't had anything available I'm gonna move again <laughs> uh, I haven't had anything available to order in my shop so uh, it's been really good to have that break and really be able to focus on just advents and um, I've actually finished which is the quickest and earliest I've ever finished dyeing and labelling and wrapping every single advent mini for this year so I'm really proud of that 
and I may regret this decision <laughs> because it's lovely to know that it's all done but as it's so early on in the year I have said that um, I will offer some more advents. I know I closed orders quite early this year and that meant that some people missed out and I've had quite a few messages saying I, I missed out, I didn't get one. Um, so I opened up a waiting list over on Instagram and I will now email everyone on my waiting list to get their orders. Um, and once I've taken their orders, I will open up orders on my website. So if you missed an advent and you're interested, check the links below. I will do a separate link for the Christmas Rainbow, which is the re-release of my 2021 advent. And I will have a separate link for this year's, which is called A Very Quiet Christmas. And it's mostly semi-solids and tonals, um, mostly like really light pastels, and then just a little, a couple of little variegated ones to help it fade. Um, so if you missed it, you're not too late, because <laughs> I managed to get everything done so quickly, you can um, still order, but it will be quite a sharp turnaround, so please don't wait to order if that sounds like something you're keen on. Um, the only other thing in my shop right now, oh, sorry, is the Brambley Hedge Yarn Club. Um, I don't think I even talked about the Brambley Hedge Yarn Club on YouTube, I think it's been that long since I made a video. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. But this year I've been running the Brambley Hedge Yarn Club, which is a club with five instalments. I decided not to do a monthly one this year, um, but it's five instalments. There was winter, spring, summer, which have all gone out, um, but there is now an autumn instalment and I've also made a Christmas instalment. And the way that my Brambley Hedge Yarn Club works is that I release the fabric and the palette as the early bird edition. So before I've made the samples, I release um, the early bird edition, which you can order. And if you choose to order the one that comes with a project bag, you get a free notions pouch just for kind of getting your order in early, which helps me um, make time to make the samples and things. And then once I've released the samples, the early bird edition isn't available and it's um, just the regular version. So there's no free notions pouch after the early bird edition um, is taken away. So this is the fabric for the Brambley Hedge Autumn instalment. So they're inspired by the Brambley Hedge books, which are the sweetest, quaintest little children's books about some mice who live in Brambley Hedge. Those are like the name that we give to blackberry plants here in the UK. Um, and they're like really big, they overgrow, they're really big thorny plants and they're covered in flowers in spring and then in summer they are heaving with enormous juicy blackberries. Um, and they grow in hedgerows, so in the UK around farmland we would have hedges rather than, I mean we do have fences as well, but hedgerows became quite popular. Um, few hundred years ago I was learning about hedgerows actually because you can tell how old a hedgerow is by the main um, shrubs and trees and bushes that they put into the hedgerows so hedgerows were planted around the edges of fields to stop livestock um, from wandering off and stop people coming onto your farmland and that kind of thing um, and yeah you can tell if it's like a Tudor hedge because it contains lots of hazel or something, that's probably the wrong one, but um, I found that really interesting. And I got totally distracted, sorry. Um, so yeah, that's what Brambley Hedge is. It's a story of some lovely little mice who live in a bramble hedgerow and they all of their stories are really seasonal so there's a spring story where they're all like um you know the sun's just come out and they're like collecting wildflowers and doing lots of spring things and then the summer one is inspired by a little wedding between dusty dormouse and oh what's her name I can't remember her name now, um, but that's really precious to me because my husband and I, when we got married, I was really inspired by that wedding and tried to have some like little nods to the Brambley Hedge style of wedding where it's all very like um, relaxed and everybody brought their own cake for the afternoon tea, like if people had their own 
special cake you know like you would know auntie julie's chocolate fudge cake so she made her fudge cake and my mum made a lemon drizzle cake and i made a lavender cake so we all had brought our own cakes and that was very um Bramley hedge so that was the summer one and now we're on to the autumn installment which autumn in the uk is probably my favorite season because it's fresh back to school time and the hedgerows are covered in all these juicy blackberries and we use them to make crumble and make jam and yeah it's like the weather's a little bit more gentle for those of us who i'm i'm very pale skinned so i shade bathe i cannot sit around in the sunshine because i just burn immediately and autumn is lovely here because september is normally still quite sunny and warm but not blistering heat and that kind of thing so I love autumn and this is the fabric for the autumn club it's got these gorgeous like plummy purples some blues in there this purple was really reminding me of like blackberry stains from when you would go blackberry picking um and the lovely blues which kind of reminded me of like a deep autumn sky and the greens those really like rich greens. So if you're new um, to my shop or my channel, I love pastels. So although I'm showing you this, this palette will be like muted down to make pastels. It won't be like super dark or anything. Although there will be some speckling and variegation just to kind of nod to the fabric. The bulk of the yarn, the main body of the yarn will be quite pastel. So that's the Autumn Club. You can have um, sock, a sparkle sock or DK and you can choose from a 100 gram skein, 5 20 gram minis or a sock set which is 100 grams plus a 20 gram mini. Um, and you can choose to add a bag. If you do add a bag, order it soon and you can get the early bird edition um, or just not have the bag. And all versions come with a little progress keeper and stitch marker set. Then I'm going to say the c word so <laughs> um christmas this is the fabric for the christmas installment of the brambley hedge yarn club i fell in love with this fabric both of these are liberty by the way i generally always use liberty because i know the quality will be great and the patterns are always gorgeous but i chose this because it had some lovely kind of christmassy pinks and a bit of like deep burgundy red I'm not a fan of Christmas red, you know, like Father Christmas's, um, Father Christmas's outfit, like bright red, but I do love a more like rich bottle red and like wine red, that kind of color. And the green I thought was this gorgeous, like emerald green. Again, um, the yarn will be a pastel version of this. It won't be super dark like this burgundy, although there will be, some speckling and some variegation as well. That's the Christmas one. The yarn options are all the same for that as well. And I've released the two together so that if you're international, you can order both at the same time and just pay one shipping charge rather than ordering them separately. Um, I know that's a bit of a tricky thing with clubs, isn't it? That you end up paying twice um, or paying every month for your shipping, which is something I'm thinking about for next year. I am planning to go back to doing a monthly club, but I'm thinking of making it available three months at a time. So you can order a quarter and a quarter and a quarter and a quarter. So you only pay for the shipping four times as opposed to 12 times, which should make quite a difference, hopefully. Um, yes, yeah, so that's, that's all that's in the shop at the moment. There will be new things coming. I have some very exciting things to share with you very soon. Um, once Advents are all done, I'm going to kind of relaunch the shop, have a redo of my website, reorganise things on there. I'm going to bring back all of my signature colourways and some new colourways which will become part of my signature collection. Um, some colourways won't come back and I'll just have a bit of a rethink and reorganize because ever since I started Elderflower Stitches, I've just kind of added and added and added, or oh, do a new collection, another new collection, and it's kind of been, I don't wanna say chaotic, but it's been a very creative process and not particularly like 
strategic or organized sorry that light is really bright I'm, I'm glowing I have a halo now <laughs> um so it's not ever been particularly strategic or, or organized and I'm kind of feeling like I want that organization now just for myself as much as for you um so yeah new things coming to the shop some completely new products um which I'm excited about and will be incorporated into clubs next year. I'm being all suspicious and secretive now. Um, but yeah, lots of exciting things coming. So bear with me on that and it will be reopened soon. But Advents are available if you missed one. And Brambley Hedge Yarn Club are open for your next orders. Okay, I have relocated and hopefully the lighting is a little bit better. I'm over in my little sewing corner of my sewing room now. Um, so I hope you don't mind the change of background. I'm going to share some finished objects with you. I have three finished objects. One is knitting, two are sewing projects, and all three of them are for my lovely little boy, Gus. Um, he turned two last month. Um, he's just the sweetest little thing ever. Um, yeah, he's adorable. I'm trying not to show too much of him as he gets older because he might not want that when he's older, but I will include a few cute clips just because he's so adorable. Um, but yeah, this project I cast on when he was a baby. I can remember trying it on him when he was maybe like nine months old or something and I've only just finished so I'm hoping that it still fits <laughs> um, because I made it in age two but it is this gorgeous colour work sweater called the Mariek Little and it's a pattern by Anna Dervo of Along Avec Anna and it is a colour work yoke uh, top down raglan sweater pattern um, and I have finished it. I haven't woven any ends and I haven't washed and blocked it. Um, these colourways don't have names. I basically dyed them up to make this jumper. I dress Gus in lots of like navy and blue. I love blue um, and tan. He's got lots of like tan chinos and tan little shoes and things. So I dyed these colours up because I knew it would go with what he actually wears. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It looks lovely. The colours go really well together. And then the background is just a natural um, DK yarn. So this is in age two, I think. Um, but it measures up quite well with the jumpers that he's wearing at the moment. So I'm hoping we'll be okay to wear it um, this autumn and winter. And he probably won't fit in it after that, which is a shame. <laughs> maybe once it's washed and blocked, it will come out a little bit bigger. I can feel a bit of stretch to it, so maybe I can block it quite firmly. Um, it used one and a half balls of the undyed DK and about half of a mini to do the colour work um, in each colour. There is a little colour work chart to do a bit on the cuff here. I kind of just wanted to finish the jumper and get it done. So I didn't actually add the colour work to the sleeves. But yeah, I'm a bit in love with this. It's super cute and I'm really looking forward to getting it washed and blocked, weaving in those ends and taking some pictures of Gus wearing it on a nice crisp autumn day, um, which hopefully we have around the corner. So that's exciting. One project done. The next project I made, so this is also for Gus, and this is a sewing project. Um, <laughs> basically, Gus has a little um, dolly and a pram, which he loves to he loves to play with. He adores babies. He really, you know, if somebody's got a baby nearby, he wants to go over and look and hold their hand, and he's really gentle with them, um, which is so sweet. And yeah, he's got a little dolly at home, but I do find it difficult because he's a boy to find dolly accessories that aren't like pink and covered in unicorns and I think it's fine for boys to have think pink, pink things and wear pink things um, but I also don't want to like <laughs> force that on him if you know what I mean um, so I thought It'd be really cute for him to have a little changing bag for his dolly, but all the ones that I could find were like sugary pink and not 
something that I wanted in my living room. <laughs> basically because it's as much about what what we're surrounding ourselves with as what we're getting for him so I decided to make one and I had some of this gorgeous fabric which like matches my top you can tell I love a bit of blue and white um this gorgeous fabric which is the Liberty Glen Jade in this royal blue it is so pretty um it's more like a leaf pattern than a floral uh, which makes it feel a little bit less girly, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I made him a little changing bag for his dolly. Uh, it's got this little strap, which I really should have interfaced, but I, I don't know why, I just didn't think to do that. Um, and I used my sock bag pattern, uh, which is available in my Etsy shop, but I just made a few adjustments and I put pockets on the outside. Um, and then just did a plain lining with no pockets on the inside because I thought he'd find it quite tricky to put things into the pockets in the bag whereas I thought if the pockets on the outside he can somebody's driving way too fast on the main road there <laughs> sorry about that um he can put things more easily into the pockets if they're if you can see them on the outside so I did four pockets on the outside just by sewing an extra layer when I did the side seams and the base um, and I top stitched down the center to divide it into um, pockets. Some people who drive along the main road, um, which is like around the corner of my house, really think they are Formula One drivers and you can hear their engines. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you can hear that on camera. Um, yeah, so there's the little changing bag he's got some spare trousers for dolly and some little nappies a little bottle and this adorable little duck which i cannot take credit for my mother-in-law made this <laughs> little feet she's so cute <laughs> um yeah my mother-in-law knitted this she loves to knit little cuddly toys so yeah, that's Gus's little changing bag for his dolly. Let me know if you want the full like pattern instructions, you because I could just make a little add-on pack to go with the sock pattern, um, the sock bag pattern. Sorry. <clears throat> and another project for Gus. <laughs> we absolutely love camping. My husband and I both went camping lots as. As children, um, I used to go, my parents had a caravan uh, in the 90s and <laughs> we would go on lots of lovely holidays. They were in the caravan club, which I don't know if it's an international thing, but here in the UK you can join a caravan club and then go to like really nice campsites, a part of the caravan club. Um, and I have so many lovely memories of being in the caravan and us all being together and um, I remember <laughs> we would like have this awning that zipped onto the caravan and when it would rain we would sit out in the awning and I remember one day playing drafts with my dad um, and like hearing the rain on the awning and just, it's such a core memory of mine, love camping. And my husband used to do a lot of Euro camp with his family, so that's where you would go to a campsite over in mainland Europe, like Spain or France, and there would already be a tent set up for you, and you could just take your stuff, and there's already a tent for you. So he did lots of that in like Spain and France, and has lots of gorgeous memories that his family share with us. So, yeah, camping is like part of both of us. And so we knew when we had a baby that we definitely wanted to do some family camping trips. And this summer we bought ourselves a huge tent. It's a six person tent with a blackout bedroom, amazing. Um, one of the main issues you have when you're camping is that it's so sunny in the morning, uh, especially because you go through the summer months and then you're awake at like 5 a.m. because it's sunny, but we've got these blackout bedrooms and they've been amazing. It's meant that we can put Gus down early evening, enjoy the evening to ourselves, and then actually sleep until a reasonable hour in the morning. He has loved it because he wakes up in the morning and we're right there at home. He's in his own bedroom um, and we go in and get him once he's awake, but yeah, he loved being in the tent and just like, 
standing up in his little travel cot and being like, Mama, Papa, we're all here together. And like we have a little cuddle in bed and then make pancakes for breakfast and stuff. So he is loving it. We've already been camping um, twice. We've been uh, to a little town called Bodium in Sussex. And then we went to Lingfield in Surrey. Um, once just the three of us to Bodium and then we went with all of my family to Lingfield in Surrey. So my brother and my niece, my mum and my dad. So it was really lovely. And um, yeah, really special memories. And I wanted to make a project that would kind of contain all of those memories of all of our camping trips. And so I decided to make Gus a camp blanket. Now, if you were ever a guider or a scout or an explorer, you may well have had one of these yourself. Um, and so it's basically a blanket with a hole in the middle for your head so you can wear the blanket like a poncho. Um, and looking online, there are lots of different styles that people do. So I make it like a cape with um, a little button to do your blanket up. Some make it more like a poncho. I decided to do this the sort of poncho style and add a hood. So without any further ado, here is Gus's camp blanket. So I added a hood to his camp blanket. This is a little hole for his head here. And here's his name. I just bought like a basic blanket from um, Argos, I think, from Habit Habitat, who sell through Argos. And I cut it in half because I knew the whole blanket itself would be too big for Gus. It would be trailing around on the floor. Cut it in half and then in the middle, I cut a little circle for his head. I didn't finish the seams because it's not fraying and I finished sewing it the day that we went camping. So I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, I think it's fine. Um, I added this hood by cutting out this shape from the, the spare half that I had where I cut the blanket in half to make it. Um, sewed up the back seam and then just stitched it round to the hole and then I turned the front down a little bit just so that it wasn't a, a raw edge at the front and I bound the edge of the hoodie, the hood, in this gorgeous Liberty fabric which is the same fabric that I appliqued his name on with. Ah! <laughs> so cute. He looks adorable in this. I'll try to include a little photo. He didn't really want to wear it the first time we went camping. I don't think he understood. And then the second time we went camping, I had made a matching one for my niece and hers, her name is in the um, Liberty Glen Jade and it's got the hood as well. And she wore it like the whole time. She just thought this was amazing. It's a blanket that you can wear. She was like, it's like my Snuggie, but it had her name on. And um, then Gus wanted to wear it to be like his cousin because he adores her. My niece is 10. Um, so Gus just adores her. He like, you know, worships her and thinks she's amazing. So he wanted to wear his camp blanket to be like her. Um, but to make it like extra personalized and special, I included some little iron on patches of things that Gus loves. So I found this cute little cat, which looks a bit like our cat Beatrice. And then this little train which is from a little um, railway that we've been to. Um, it's just some little vehicles. He loves vehicles, really into space and um, space shuttles. So I gave him this um, pack of like coloring sheets and there was a space shuttle in it and he didn't really know what one was obviously. So we played him a video of a space shuttle launching. He thought that was amazing. And then we found this video of this um, astronaut, a female astronaut, talking about living inside the International International Space Station. Um, and he was just mesmerised for like 20 minutes. He sat and listened to this lady talk about living in the International, International Space Station. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's really into space and rockets and things at the moment, which is cool. And this little bike and a boat. 
And then my favorite part, I found this person who makes iron-on patches for every county in the UK. So every county in the UK, which is like how the, well, every county in England, I should say, England is divided up into counties. So our county is called Sussex. Um, and then our neighbouring counties are Surrey and Kent um, and Hampshire, I think, on that side. And each of them have their own flag, which is a like tradition of each of the English counties. And um, they, they have made the flags into these little shields, which you can iron on. How amazing is that? So the first place that we went camping was Bodium, which is in Sussex. So we've got the Sussex patch. And then the second place we went camping was Lingfield in Surrey, so we got a little Ling, um, a little Surrey patch. So this is the Surrey flag, which is so cool. So we've got two more camping holidays booked. We're going down to Bath, which is in Somerset, so I need to order a Somerset patch. And then we are going camping in the on the Isle of Wight, so we need to get a little Isle of Wight patch. But I love the idea of just filling up his blanket with all these patches. Um, and being able to go, oh, that's when we went here and, and, you know, share all of our memories of all of the amazing camping holidays that we've had together. So that's my third and final finished object. Let's talk about whips. Okay, it's, it's been a little while since I have enjoyed knitting. It's kind of felt a bit of a chore. Um which is not how I want it to feel. I just haven't been that inspired and excited to knit lately. So I thought I would just do some really simple, easy projects just to kind of get my enthusiasm back. And I had seen lots of people making this pattern and it is called the Sophie Scarf, which is a pattern by Petite Knit, which is a super popular indie knitting pattern company. Um, and it is a really simple scarf which you can wrap around and tie in a little bow which is quite a cute like vintagey style um, and it's knit in DK yarn and there's a small or a large version I decided to go with the large and I'm knitting it in this um, semi-solid fabric a fabric I'm, my brain is still sewing at the moment semi-solid um, DK yarn, which is from my shop. It's called Vintage Silk. It's one of my signature colorways. Um, I knit a sweater in this colorway and it's so gorgeous. Kind of just fits with a lot of colors because it's so, um, it's so simple. But basically, it's a big triangle with an I-cord border and then garter stitch. So it's really easy, really mindless. I was watching, I was watching a film whilst I was knitting on this. What was I watching? I was watching um, Lady Chatterley's Lover, which I've seen so many times. I watched the Netflix adaption of it. So, you know, I needed to be able to watch handsome Oliver Mellors, <laughs> not be distracted by my knitting. So this was a great little project to work on. Um, and this is halfway here, this is my marker for halfway. So this is one half, and then this is the first decrease. So you start really thin, and then you increase, 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 and then you stop, and then you start decreasing. Um, I have run out of yarn, <laughs> and I'm now trying to decide um, and just because I didn't organize myself and I, you know, I'm just going to cast something on, I need to make something. So I don't really organize myself for this project very well. Um, and I now need to decide, should I just accept that I'm not going to get the same color result? Because even if I dye it up again myself, it's going to be a different dye lot. It's not going to be exactly the same. So would I rather have an obvious colour change and make it look intentional or like an awkward, oh dear, it's a different dye lot, it's a slightly different colour. So this is vintage silk and then this colourway is caramel latte ombre which is 
um, another of my colorways. It was actually in my 2020 yarn advent, which was my first yarn advent. Um, hands up if you were there then. <laughs> um, but it's it's using the same color. This is it as a light semi-solid, and this is the same color but dyed up as an ombre, which is where you dip. I dip like two thirds of the skein in the yarn in the dye pull it out and then I dip one third back in to make it darker. So I could do that and it would coordinate really nicely. It would obviously be different because this is variegated. Or I could try and dye up another mini. <sighs> what do you think? I've My heart is thinking, I've got that one already wound up. Is it best just to use that and then I can just carry on knitting? Um, and then I have this very obvious colour change, like an intentional colour block. Um, or should I have, try and dye up a mini to match, but then potentially it might not match. And then would it just look a bit awkward that it's not a complete match? I don't know. Maybe I'll have a go at dyeing some, see how that turns out. If I'm not happy with it, I'll, I'll just add on the, the ombre one. But let me know what you think. What would you do? I mean, obviously, you're more sensible than me, so you wouldn't have cast on when you know you didn't have enough yarn because I'm just a bit silly like that. I just wanted to knit something. And then, anyway, that got me inspired <clears throat> to do some more knitting. I just need to look up the name of this designer. So, knitting on that got me inspired to then do a bit more knitting and do you know what I have tried to just knit things and then realized I'm not gonna wear it I'm I don't love it I'm using yarns that I maybe aren't, I'm not gonna wear so I decided just to go with what would I actually wear what do I want in my wardrobe <laughs> life's crazy again I'm so sorry um, and I want pretty pastel lacy things so I decided to cast on a pair of wildflowers and honeycomb socks which is a pattern by this handmade life um i'm going to try and get a picture of the lace a bit better they're so pretty really simple lace pattern um and i've so far done a toe and a bit of lace knitting they are meant to be cuffed down, so you'll notice that I've got the decreases on this side and it's meant to be on the top side, but I don't like cuff down. I like to do toe up, um, so I'm just accepting that the lace is upside down, but that is fine with me. So I'm knitting them in this sock yarn. This is Point Shoes, which is another um, signature colorway that I, I dye it up because I love it. <laughs> I want to live in this colour, it's so pretty, it's just like a really pale blush, um, really really light peach. So I have knit the first half of the lace and then I have started, no I'm just about to start, no I have just started, like the lace stitching is just on the needle, um, I've just started the second half of the lace pattern and then you repeat, so I've got the lace coming here and here and then it will repeat so it's you kind of do them at offset from each other um yeah so this is the yarn this is the super sock base so 75 percent super wash merino 25 percent nylon and it's 425 meters for 100 grams so it's slightly on the lighter side of sock yarn um i mean marginally i love this because it's such a high twist that you get this really gorgeous stitch definition when you do lace work with it it's really pretty and this is my little my little dragonfly we get lots of dragonflies in our garden because we live on the edge of farmland and they've they've got ditches like drainage ditches around the edge of the farmland um so there's like you know when it, wherever you have areas of water like a pond or a lake you can get dragonflies and we get quite a lot of them in the garden so there's my little dragonfly also um 
inspired by Gilmore Girls, the Dragonfly Inn. Um, I think I've got a couple of these left in the shop actually, um, over in my Etsy shop. They come with the little stitch markers. I don't like super big stitch markers when I'm doing lace. I just want something simple to break out. So I may make these little bead ones like a little bit of prettiness, but not too much. So yeah, that is the Wildflowers and Honeycomb Socks by This Handmade Life. It's quite a popular pattern. It's less than three pounds. So it's, that's quite cheap for a, an indie sock pattern, I think. Um, and that's what I'm making. I have another whip to show you. I know, loads. And you know, I think actually the Mariette sweater is the only whip that I had shown you last time in my podcast. I think the rest of them are all new. This one is so squishy. It's so gorgeous. Okay. This yarn is so dreamy. Um, I used this yarn to make my boho blush shawl. And I also used it to make a shawl for two of my grandmothers. Um, one in like a really pale blue um, for my grandmother June. And one in a really pale purple for my grandmother Peggy. Who um, sadly they both have passed away now. Um, and I had the, I had my nan Peggy's shawl given back to me. Um, but it's the most beautiful yarn. It is 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. So you get this gorgeous sheen. You also get this like slight halo. Can you see that like fuzziness around it? And this most amazing drape from the silk. It is gorgeous. And I have decided to knit myself a pair of wrist ticklers which i can't find the little printout pattern for now um but it is a free pattern by Kay jones of the bakery bears and she says it started out as a sock pattern a scrappy sock pattern and then she decided to knit it into a pair of wrist warmers so it starts off as a cuff down sock and then you just keep knitting in a little tube and then you do another lot of ribbing another cuff the other end so it doesn't have a thumb gusset it doesn't have a thumb hole it's not like fingerless mitts it is a cuff that just goes from the end of your wrist to your hand so you can have it just pulled up you know like you would pull your sleeves up maybe if you're wearing something with slightly shorter sleeves you can pull these on and then you have like a little bit of coverage just to keep your wrists a bit warm. So let's try it on. This is how it's looking so far. Very, very snuggly and gorgeous. It does actually give you quite a bit of warmth just like that. So I'm probably going to knit another two inches, I think. I think I'm over halfway of the length I'd like. So maybe just two more inches of plain stocking stitch and then another 12 rows of ribbing. This is 12 rows of one by one twisted. Um, and then I'll cast off and make the next one. I've had some issues, um, my own fault, nobody else's. I bought the wrong needles basically. I've got this awful laddering. Can you see that here um, down this row? Um, in between those stitches and that is because I bought these needles excitedly thinking oh um, a local shop sells proper sock needles um, but they're 60 centimeter circulars instead of 80 centimeter circulars which means they, they are pulling the um, they're pulling the side seams open and uh, that is not very helpful because I'm getting laddering both sides. It's so much better than it was. I've managed to pull it in a lot more and I'm hoping with a bit of blocking that I'll manage to rescue it a bit more, but I'm not I'm not very happy. I'm going to order myself another pair of um, sock needles with 80 centimeter. I normally always use 80 centimeter 
and I don't know why I just forgot that and bought these needles. But anyway, the Knit Pro Zings, which I haven't used before, and they feel really, really light. Um, I don't know if I like it. They feel almost fragile that they're so light. I normally use Knit Pro Novas, and I think they've got a bit more weight to them, so I'm undecided about whether or not I like them. Um, and I will probably just order Knit Pro Novas with an 80 centimeter, 80 centimeters instead of 60. But yes, a gorgeous yarn and it's gonna be lovely as a wrist warmer. It's a perfect project for this kind of yarn because you get to really appreciate how soft and squidgy it is. And this is also point shoe, so it's the same color as my socks, but just on a different base. And you can see how because this is non-superwash and this is superwash, how they take the colour slightly differently um, and how this has a slightly more matte finish but you've got this lovely sheen to that one. So I'm very much enjoying knitting on all of these lovely pastel projects and can't wait to wear them all. Um, but I can wait, I'd like a little bit more summer before we get into autumn because um, I need to finish them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's what I am knitting on. I don't have any sewing plans at the moment because I'm gearing up to start the advent bags and that's quite a big sewing project that will take a few weeks. So I probably won't do any other sewing around that time. I'll probably want to do a bit of knitting as a bit of a palette cleanser. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Um, coming up, today is Sunday the 20th, so my husband's working from home today, but he had Friday off as a little, um, kind of extra, well not extra, but to make up for the fact that he'd have to work from home, so I've, I've got some shop work to do that I can just do while Gus is playing, um, and while Joe is working up here, and I'm going to be prepping the full skeins for the advents and also prepping a wholesale order so the lovely Kathy at Socialising in York has um, placed her second wholesale order with me um, so if you are in York or you're near York you can go and squish my yarn in person and go and buy it in person which is really exciting um, and I think you'll be able to buy it through her website as well so yes, my yarn's heading all the way up to York. Um, if you have a knitting shop near you or you own a knitting shop and you would love to see my yarn in that shop, um, you can always send my details to them or you send their details to me um, because I do have like a wholesale um, side of the business as well. So I've done a few little um, wholesale things now you can buy if there's any left you could buy my yarn at the yarn dispensary in Faversham and now um, socializing in York so that's so exciting um, yeah I would love to do more of that because I know seeing yarn in person is so um, is so much easier to understand the colour and know what you might make with it and dream things up as you're squidging it um, versus looking online. Um, but I'm a little bit nervous in person and although I did do a pop-up shop at um, the Yarn Dispensary in Faversham, I was a little bit nervous and found that quite like ah, intense. I don't like to, yeah, I don't know, I feel a bit, I, feel, I find that really odd. It's lovely to meet people and there were people who knew who I was and there were people who found me through doing that, um, which was really fun. Um, I don't know how I'd feel about doing a proper yarn show because it just all seems a bit big and grown up and scary for me and my tiny, tiny little micro business. Um, yeah, so we'll see. But yeah, definitely excited to do more wholesale and maybe pop up shops in the future. Um, yeah, so I'm prepping yarn for advent full skeins, prepping yarn for the wholesale orders, and then I've made all of the stitch markers and progress keepers to go with the advent calendars. So I need to like mount them onto their little blush ribbons and sew them onto their cards. I need to print more cards so I can put them on to the cards. Um, and yeah, just a bit more packaging prep. 
hopefully the parcel boxes for the advents are arriving today so i can get all of the minis only advents packaged up send out your shipping emails and people can get their shipping sorted and then we will have advents in the post this is the earliest i have ever ever managed to get them posted i'm sure and the full skein ones will follow shortly after hopefully next weekend the full skein ones will be going out and then a couple of weeks after that the ones with bags will go out because it'll just be a slow process of making bags um and then i will get to work on the next batch so i will leave the orders open for the next batch of advents until all of this lot have shipped and then i will do a really quick turnaround of dyeing and twisting and wrapping and <laughs> all of that um i may limit how many bags i offer just because that is a slower process but yeah that's my plan for today and the coming weeks lots of sewing inside i've got all of the fabric um big boards of cotton drill that i use and the cotton for the lining and the interfacing it all arrived I think the delivery drivers around here must be like what is she doing in there with these huge boxes and boards of things and yeah they must be very suspicious <laughs> yeah i hope that you're well i'm sorry it's been so long since i filmed a video i'm really going to try not to leave it this long i basically just totally psyched myself out i think i built it up to being this huge deal um and then didn't want to knit anything didn't want to film anything and just like yeah really psyched myself out so <sighs> sorry about that <laughs> but I'm back I'm filming I'm knitting and hopefully we'll keep this momentum going and I will see you very soon with some finished objects and maybe some new cast-ons um but yeah let me know what would you do with the Sophie scarf would you go with the variegated would you try and dye up another one as similar as possible? I'm not sure what to do. And if you have made it this far, as a little thank you, um, pop a comment below for me and I'm going to do a little sneaky giveaway. Um, when I do my next podcast, I will pick somebody from the comments to win some yarn. I think I will just choose a nice skein off my... Um, off my shelf so leave me a little comment to let me know you got this far you watched all the way to the end and i will pick one of you to win some yarn when i do my next vlog or podcast thank you so much for joining me and i will see you very soon bye